Hey everybody, it's Chris. This is an Amiga 1000. This is a Pi Storm. Let's see what happens. So there's been an ongoing debate whether the Pi Storm works in an Amiga 1000 or not. Now I can tell you right off the bat, mine's a little different. Probably not. I don't know. Uh, it has the uh, Spirit 1 Meg Insider board. So I gotta disassemble it now and I gotta where the hell's John Holmes? Okay, gotta use, gotta use John Holmes on this because while this one works, it just, she don't get in there. Still got the tabs intact. All right, so with the 1000 cover removed, what's the main benefit of this thing in a one in a 1000? I'll tell you what it's going to be. It's because you uh, gain kickstart. You gain hard drive. So now here's the dilemma with an Amiga 1000 and a Pi Storm. You got this massive piece of metal that is housing a 1010 floppy drive that they shoved in the 1000, right? The 68000 sits way down low. So I have a Spirit inside board, and if I was to take my 68000 out, mine would sit in there, but you can see how it's just going to... I'm not getting that SD card out, and the HDMI can go out, around, down, maybe I can slide it out the side trap door. There will be no holes cut in this at all. If anything, I'd pull the modulator out and just shove her back through that. But, you know, this has that weird, what is it, a five pin, six pin, eight pin, seven pin, eight pin, DIN type cable for their TV and modulator cable. So, yep. Can you use the RGB Pi Denise dude on here too? You sure can. You just got to kind of squish her in here, but see, I'm NTSC, so my daughter board is a little bit close. So between, you know, Agnes, Paul, and Denise sitting right here, you're going to be kind of tight on, at least on an NTSC model, because we got this big old Hoss board that's kind of in the way. So I'm going to do the right thing, and that's ignore all that. I have to get my spirit board out. Here's the spirit board. Now, what is this crazy wiring? Inside of the Spirit Technologies manual, it says to take pin 10 of each of your PALs and ground them out to the power supply uh, ground. There's a lug right here with a screw hole that is connected to the power supply. Something to do with math and science does something with better something. Um, to remove the Spirit board, it has pins that are just a little bit long, so I'm going to carefully just wiggle this turd. There we go. And you will see the two uh, solder points right here. Now because I'm lazy and I really just don't feel like getting the soldering iron out, I'm just going to go like this. One, two. I can fix that later. And here's the spirit board and there's those pins I was telling you about. They're just a little long in the tooth. This whole board gives you 1.5 meg and a 68,000. On a plus note, I don't have to pull the 68,000 out. Whoop. And this is no light pickle. Right down here, can you see that? I'll have to tilt it because, whoop, that was a floppy drive button. I broke the thing off. I got to print me a new one. Right here is your 68,000 slot. So if I was to take this hoss, I'm going to separate the GPIO and the Pi 3 just so we can get a little bit of better viewing pleasure. And there you go. You see that socket? Well, you can see half of it. You can see this part. The other one's right here. Now, this has to go in a certain way. There is a notch out for the pin, which would go this way. And you can squish it in here, but watch. Just go underneath. There's the pie storm. And here's where you're going to run into some problems. Boop. You're one off. Look at this. So for those of you who are like, ah, oh, you can't fit it inside the Amiga 1000, you can. It just requires some finesse. And this project is basically referenced from Aaron from the Amigos podcast, YouTube channel, Twitch streamers. So this is for you, Aaron. So that's a Pi Storm and a 1000. Now I can put this back over top. So I want to show you what you need to do to fit the Pi Storm in here. As you can tell, we're going to be close. When I mean close, it is just 
the closest little bit. That's it. You see how close that is? You're like, well, you can just shove it in there and get underneath of it. And you can, and it's just, you're going to be up against the wall here. It's literally probably two millimeters, maybe three millimeters. If you take that off, which is way more non-destructive on your Amiga than cutting that metal, you will need to notch this bit of the Raspberry Pi 3 out. It doesn't hurt the Pi Storm, it doesn't hurt the Amiga, it's a $25 Raspberry Pi and you're not using the holes anyway. There are some 3D printed brackets you can get with like HDMI plugs and stuff, but you have to remove your metal shield plate here. You're going to be in here anyway, maybe, probably not. This is a Dremel, it's a rotary tool that you can attach a bunch of bits to if you don't know what a Dremel is. And I cut that, that little hole over here. Here's the Raspberry Pi. And if I did this correctly, I'll turn this way so you can see. When I put this cover back on, it should just fit. Bingo! So the drive will still function. Pi is a little close. I could go a little bit more this way. It's just ground plane. My favorite part is no more kickstart discs. Just like that floppy disk is in where nothing happened. I just plugged it in, ran the cable underneath the daughter board and the Pi. And I did omit the ground to ground wire. That's just ridiculous because it's already grounded. There we go. Now let's, uh, the ultimate bird. Let's, uh, I broke my floppy button. Floppy disk works. Eject. Now the disk light is of course on the case. There you go. I'm going to take you off a steady stick here and do a little hands free activation. I'm a really good filmer. When I mean close, that is close. So, I could actually take a little bit more. Where are you at? off of this side. Uh, this is all just ground playing through here. You see, I didn't have to hook up anything. The back side of the 1010 is way up here. Cables beneath. Cables below. Some kind of crazy dance because Commodore decided to put pin one here and pin one here. Yep. The only thing I omitted was the ground clip from there to that little peg thing wherever the hell it's at. That's good because it's grounded here here, here, and here, and then, yep, let me button this cover up, put it back together, we're going to put it on the original Commodore 1080, sitting right there, alright, so I got the lid back on, we're hooking up the RGB cable, it's the old Commodore one that came with the unit, 1080 monitor, power, I'm not screwing the RGB in, I'm just plugging it in, alright, Oh, can you see that? That's kind of a... Let me... Can I back this truck up any? Nope. Okay, how's that? I moved out of the way so you can see. Is that not back far enough? Anyway, doesn't matter. Powering on. Now, this will take a second longer. There's no hard drive light on this turd. And I didn't run the HDMI out. This is authentic. Amiga, Amiga. We hear the floppy drive click in a second when the emulator starts for the CPU. And I did use the other mouse because the clickety clickers on this tank mouse are not uh, in the best of quality. Oh, and I'm an interlaced. Like your eyes to flicker? Awesome. Let's turn it back to poo poo this one but anyway Amiga 1000 there we go and my 15 kilohertz programs are back to 15 kilohertz and I have all of my junk that I put on here Opus look how fast this is now I do only have 393k of well, 400k of chip 131 megs of fast so it's not uh, you know the greatest in chip RAM, but it's an Amiga 1000. It now doesn't require the stupid kickstart disc.
thank goodness, because that was such a pain in the butt. I know there's other solutions out there, you know, CP relocators and riser things, but for zero dollars and zero cents, pounds, quid, euros, whatever you're rocking, uh, you can just grind a, a, a screw hole out and non-destructive insert. For the Amiga 1000, kickstarts are no more for me. And the floppy drive works and everything's groovy and I have all of my ports and no problems. So that's all I got. This has been an Amiga 1000 with a Pi Storm. No more kickstarts. Thanks for watching and I hope you learned something.